You allowed your upper body to be submerged, hanging onto the cold water without moving a single inch. Your hands floating, pushed around by the barely existing current. Through your eyes you watched fish swim by you. You counted them. Two, then three, then two, then three, and four, and two, and then none. They usually swam around in groups of two or three. You were hunting, starving. The dark corners of the lair of only having meager meals to offer. There were two, then three, then five, then four. You were an ambush predator, too weak and frail for actual combat, but devious, ruthless, and brutal enough to hunt things unaware of you. Things smaller than you, and yes, things weaker than you. There were four, then three, then two, and then one. Your eyes widened as they followed this singular fish. It sucked up the mud from the ground and spat it out again, looking for any tiny scrap. It was fat and hungry, so were you. Slowly you peeled yourself out of your rotten shell, slipping soundlessly into the water. It didn't notice you until your thin, white hand squeezed around the fish's tail. Leaping out of the water, the fish fought against your tight grip, wiggling at the gnashing with its sharp mouth. You grabbed a brick from the ground with your other hand and... fought. Pathetically, with your meal in your arms, you crawled back into your shell, making sure to seal the opening with some mud as you began feasting. This was how you spent most of your days in hell, looking for food. Occasionally, there was a demon coming by and that you hid from. Very rarely they were open for some conversation. The fish you were hunting were so-called dread chargers. Aggressive hellborn fish, barely more intelligent than a mouse. And even though their dark red scales were incredibly hard and sharp, the slightly stringy meat tasted like salty salmon and was therefore quite delicious, even if eaten raw. The problem was their speed of alarmed. They had usually two responses, bite anything they see or flee. Hence why ambushing them the way you just did was the best way of getting one. You lived in a space often referred to as the cold storage. A large cavern area below the city where an ill mist kept the entire area at quite chilly temperatures. Demons who were sensitive to heat often found themselves here, fighting in the dirt and mud over anything edible. In an almost feral fashion. But what segregated them from actual feral demons was that the dwellers of the cold storage actually managed to create functioning communities, sometimes, in the form of small wooden villages, some even having electricity down here. It was a poor existence, but for many it was better than anything up there. As you were peacefully eating, however, from outside your shell, you suddenly heard noises, they were muffled. You narrowed your eyes. These voices were too sophisticated to be from the cold storage. Your shell was your home. You and your shell made you safe. But also your shell was too thick and you were too afraid to leave. And you didn't hear their discussion. Leroy, I you sure the boss wanted one of these? Let me check. The demon swiped for his tablet. Boss with some quickie stuff, Nekman. 
Much, much um, stuff never seen before, so what better place to look than cold storage? That, that's what I say. So they thinking, Leroy. We take one of them shares here, and Bus can put in his aquarium. Against your consent, your home was lifted. You could feel it. It was shaking. Panicking, you curled yourself into a little ball. The remains of the fish deeply embraced as you still chewed on its meat. It were two hours later of you being transported when the vibrations suddenly stopped. After a while of you just shivering in fear, you pushed your hands against the mud to make sure the wall was still holding. Meanwhile outside, the crime boss Valentino sat, staring skeptically at what he perceived to be just some stone carving that his two minions have brought. Uh, what is this vile thing exactly? Uh, well, sir, stuttered the one named Leroy. You have sent us to send something to find, right? I wanted to find... S I wanted you to find something fabulous. This is a rock. Yes, but it's a special rock. Yes, it is. Fine, you have my attention. Don't waste it, Leroy. The two demons gulped. It's a snail woman shell. Snail woman? There, there are demons born deep down there in the dark. Often not even found on this lair. So it's a very, very pretty little rare creature. Valentine raised an eyebrow. And? Uh, this is one of their shells. Would probably look great in your aquarium. Annoyed, Valentino rubbed over his eyes. He would have preferred to see one of these snail women himself. He wondered if they were as beautiful as the minion said, or if he was just as disgusting as he looked. Ugh, whatever. It could probably still be an interesting conversation piece. What about the snail? I suppose it was gone, boss. Normally they, uh, they like stick out of these little holes. And this one doesn't even seem to have a hole. Curiously, Valentine walked over to take a closer look. Oh, you say? Yes, boss, see? I think there. It's just filled with some dirt, meaning the snail has long left. Whatever. Valentino sighed. Fine, then. Throw it in my aquarium. <sighs> Probably gives it a little more character. It had been four weeks ago when Valentino had to suffer through a rather drab party with other overlords. Uh, worst of all, he wasn't allowed to bring any company with him, and so he had eyes only for one thing the entire night. The one thing that wasn't so dry. The Overlord's indoor aquarium, with exotic fish imported through imp services from Earth. As fish from hell were difficult to keep. And, ugh, oh, Valentino had fallen absolutely in love with the concept of having his own giant fish tank in the middle of his room. The quiet buzzing of the filter, the beautiful lighting, ah, oh, it was just fabulous and calming. But most importantly, he loved screwing angel dust while the colorful shine of scales moved across his face. Ah, he loved it. In the meantime, you could feel your shell being thrown into the water. The mud of your little wall slowly leaking. You weren't scared of the water, after all you could remain for up to 12 hours in water without breathing, but you were scared of the implications of your transport. The water itself smelled different too, clean, and it was warm. 
With a shaking hand, you poked at the hole, keeping it closed while you were thinking. But as time passed, eventually, the wall broke, due to the water and the pressure. So the only choice left for you was to push it all out. Scared, you crawled forward, looking around in the clean water. Your eyes finding different demons in the room. There were two of them, yes, a white one and one dressed in a rather pompous robe. The moment Val had noticed unusual movement in his fish tank, he had dropped everything he had been doing. Ow, what was that for? shouted Angel. What are you doing, Val? He was rubbing his butt after he had been dropped by his boss. The pimp of hell looked from Angel to the beautiful little creature that had just crawled out of that ugly little rock. And I'm back to Angel. Um, Angel, baby, I think I have changed my mind for today. Angel does tilted his head, scoffing. The way his boss had been manhandling him a minute ago made him think this was gonna be one of those nights where he wouldn't be going home, but Val suddenly rethinking? Fine. <laughs> no prong with him. This was a great relief for him and his battle. Maybe I could convince Huss to put some ointment on it later. <laughs> Uh, of course not, but it was the thought that counted. And the dumb face he would make if he asked. After the spider left, Valentino walked up to his fish tank. Ooh la la. His breaths visible on the glass while he looked. while he watched you look around your new environment. You were beautiful. That was really the only word he could think of. White like a ghost. There was no coloration anywhere on your body. Even shadows looked more like grey highlights on your beautiful form than anything else. Your body was frail and feminine, looking like a thick layer of wax had been melted on top of you. Your hair looked heavy and sticky, fused with the same kind of candle wax. Your eyes glowed in an almost divine white. And your facial features seemed to be carved out of marble by a talented Greek artist. Your eyes finally met, causing you to retreat into your shell like a scared animal. But it was too late. His interest was awoken. Valentino must have you. He had never seen a creature like you, a rare form of macabre perfection. The artist in him was screaming with delight. Without thinking, he discarded his clothes, climbing up his fish tank, unlocking the trap door of the ceiling to access the opening, crawl space, through which his minions had access to the tank to clean it every week. Holding his breath, he jumped in. Bubbles escaping his sharp jaws as he swam down to your shell. Bubbling up as he looked into the hole you had retreated into. Where he saw your cowering form. Confidently he stretched out one hand, beckoning you. The air was getting a little thin now and he was getting close to blacking out until you finally took his hand. Just as his body began screaming for air. With panic kicks and you weighing him down just a little, he swam up. He coughed desperately as air returned to his lungs. Your head breaking the waters only seconds later without making a single sound. As Val was out of breath, you just stared at him. Seeing your full, unclothed body was making him blush. Him, of all people. Mm, sweetie, you really aren't like others, aren't you? He huffed, 
after spitting out some water. You blinked, not responding. You seemed to not be one for interaction. As usually, any demon you encountered wanted to harm you. Valentino then helped you out of the tank, taking note of how your lower half was just a long, slimy tail. You used your arms and hands to pull yourself forward, like a crawling zombie, or a toddler who hasn't quite yet learned how to do it. It was an arousingly pathetic display, really. So much so that he simply had to pick you up and carry you to a sofa, like you were just the greatest of treasures. Now, without the weightlessness of the water, he could feel your heaviness, though it was still less than even velvet, so not much to begin with. He rubbed you down with a towel, like a parent did their child, which only caused him to have even more goosebumps from you. It was your skin, it was just so soft and delicate. He took one of your hands to inspect your arm. Frail, borderline malnourished. Curiously, his claws pulled at your skin, immediately making you wince, trying to shove him away out of instinct, but Val was stronger, no doubt. Oh, sweetie, that hurt you already? Oh, that is so cute. Scared, you looked at him and nodded. Such a sensitive little flower you are. His fingers were shaking with the desire to nurture you, as well as the need to crush you beneath him. Both outcomes were so wonderfully sinful and artistic and meaningful. You truly were awakening the artist in him again. It had been such a long time since that last time it happened. When was the last time? Oh, yes, that was when Angel Dust signed the contract. Oh, such a beautiful feeling. But delicate for you. Wasn't the right word, he thought. It feels like that tender skin that builds on freshly cooked pudding, he thought with a giggle. And then his lips quivered. You, meanwhile, shivered at the compliment. No one had ever said anything nice about you. Please, little thing. I simply have to taste you. Will you allow me? Normally, Valentino had zero comms when it came to forcing it, of course, but... He felt like experiencing something like you for the first time would feel and be much better if it had your consent. Mm, or would it? His approach here was vital. If he pushed you down, took you by force over and over and over again, he would have the pleasure of breaking you, but if he did that... Uh, he could do this slowly, he could do this carefully, he could mold you rather than break you, mold you into an even greater piece of art than you already were. Not even Angel Dust could do this. And then he watched you lower your shoulders, he watched you lower your guard. Even so, your eyes weren't leaving his face. You were cautious, and still, you looked away submissively, oh, so sweetly. Holding your arm under his gaping jaw, the moth pimp grinned widely, his long tongue rolling out of his mouth. Gently and curiously, he licked over your arm, leaving behind a thick trail of red salvia. Your eyes widened at the feeling. It felt like a very hot eel was brushing against your skin. It wasn't terrible. You kind of liked it, even though you never experienced something like this before. But your taste, the taste of your skin was 
fascinating him. It was a little like calamari rings after carefully removing the breading. But there was also a hint of sweetness. Such a unique little taste you were. But what torture it was not to bite into you and tear your limb from limb, but why do this now, so quickly, wasting you like good wine? No. Valentina would seduce you. The torture of only slowly getting you to love him, to trust him, could eventually lead to you willingly giving your flesh to him. Oh, and that thought made him smile. He truly had never experienced anything like this. And to think you could have been found in a place as disgusting as the cold storage. Tell me, my sweeting, what's your name? He mused. You look down at yourself. Did he mean your human name? Uh, but then you remembered. You have lived once in one of the villages in the cold storage, and they expect you to choose a name unrelated to your real one. Which made you inhale sharply. And you said, Siren. It was the first time you had spoken in weeks, months. And that your voice wasn't hoarse yet was a surprise to you. But then again, you did talk to yourself a lot sometimes. When you were really lonely in your shell. Gently, Valentino placed a hand on your chin. Very, very, very fitting, little sweeting. I'm Valentino, the porn king of hell. He snickered at your change in expression. Oh, don't worry, little treat. You are not going into any of my movies. You're mine, he thought. And then he watched the relief on your face. It was beautiful. But still, I must say, I do consider you my property now. Your gaze shifted uncomfortably. After all, he pointed at your shell in his tank. Your home quite literally found its way into mine. But don't worry, the rent will be quite cheap for you. Because all I want in return is you. And the uniqueness of you. No one else is beautiful like you did I ever have in my possession. And he needed to make sure it remained that way. Uh, uh, how? You asked, scared. Valentino retreated, sitting up straight, a hand under his chin, until an evil gleam appeared in his eyes. Yes, he would seize all entrances to the cold storage. Diabolically, he chuckled. <laughs> Let that be my responsibly siren, sweetie. He then reached for your face again. Reluctantly, you let him, not like you had any other choice. Forcefully, he then pushed a finger under your upper lip to get a good look at the inside of your mouth. Interesting. He mused lustfully. Your teeth seemed a little dull. Human, even. It was rare demons had mouths of omnivores. Though obviously a creature that spent its life in mud and dirt and slime, obviously ate whatever it could get its fingers on, be it plant or meat. But then he looked into your throat. It seemed a little... tight. And you swallowed some salvia out of instinct as he inspected your maw. He watched as your throat clasped together. He blushed. It looked like the inside of a flashlight. Properly looped up, of course. Valentino sat back, looking down at you with a lewd expression. 
Not even succubi had such tempting throats. It was like your body was made to look appealing to men. You were frail, yet feminine, slimy and tender. Your taste was delicious, and you were as beautiful as Greek art. As strange as your appearance was, and what you were, it was clear to him. Snail women must be lust demons, as in your entire species, making it obvious why on the pride layer you were such a rarity, since he had never seen one of your kind. He was so glad these two dunces delivered you to him without realizing it, he would have paid them so much more. Valentina would take great care of you. You truly were his most precious pet as of this moment. Tell me, Siren, sweetie, would you like to celebrate our new partnership? You blinked. Oh, don't worry. He stood up, walking over to a selection of drinks. In that dingy hole that you lived in, sweetie, I doubt you had tasted any good booze, right? They do make moonshine down there. That's the only thing they can. He nodded. <laughs> Siren, sweetie, I'm sure you will appreciate this. He took a bottle of good scotch, placing it on his glass table in front of you. You watched him fill two glasses. Tell me more about you, Siren, sweetie. I'm simply dying to hear. Clasping the glass with both hands, you shivered. There isn't much to say. Most of my days, I was just hanging in water, waiting for any food to swim by. Sometimes when the loneliness got too great, I crawled out of my hiding spot towards the nearby village. The demons there were quite dead in sight, barely talked, but it was company. <sniffs> tisk tisk. He leaned against you. Well, that won't happen anymore, Siren, sweetie. I can guarantee that. He grabbed the other glass and then said, Drink, he ordered. You gulped and then forced yourself to swallow his medicine. It tasted good, though. A little woody, maybe a little too spicy, though. It weren't in your throat, and after feeling heat rise to your head, his grin widened. You shivered, delighted. And then he took a sip from his own glass. Yet to admit, he played with the thought of drugging you, but again, he wanted to savor you. Usually the alcohol I taste is like toilet water. You admitted after a little cough. This I can actually swallow without retching. <laughs> I know something else I'd like you to swallow, sweetie. He mused. You would blush if your blood wasn't colored white. You knew he was flirting with you, though. But after your long solitude, having someone fawn over you was quite... nice. Especially since you interpreted your new demon form as quite disgusting. You felt as if your skin was waxy and gross, but... Having his hands on you was nice. Tell you what, my sweet thing, I won't even take your soul. But I do want you to be mine. He took your hand in his, exhaling desperately. Valentina was very close to giving into his urges, and that would be a problem that would break you. Thankfully, you could tell. You lived long enough around the almost feral denizens of the cold storage. Just that his desire wasn't about food. Valentina, do I have to? You said finally. I let you. You have my consent. Even though we both know that you don't need it. 
The moth immediately lost all self-control. He didn't hesitate a single second. He threw his entire body onto you, as if he was desperate to feel as much of your body as possible. His tongue licked over your small chest, while his hands hungrily explored every inch of your tiny body. You winced in pain whenever his claws and teeth scraped over your skin. You truly were the most unique thing he had ever gotten his claws on. Finally, he made his way to your mouth. Hungrily, he devoured your lips. The unique texture of your maw made him hum in delight, making Valentino wonder what other sinful pleasures had been locked away from him forever by virtue of not being in the last layer of hell. Oh, this was his true punishment, wasn't it? But now he got a taste of what he was missing out on. Tonight he'd dine on you. And afterwards, savor every gulp he could get from you. You were giving him ultimate pleasure. And that he never wanted to be spoiled by ruining you too quickly. Valentina would take you gently tonight. His hands only here for your pleasure. To feel you for as long and tender as physically possible. He wanted to defile your body with his seed so bad. <sighs> because above all, because above anything else, he loved the idea, the metaphor, the symbolism that came with your perfection and his corruption. Thank you for watching my video until the very end. But before we end the video completely, I would like to shout out all of my wonderful channel members. Zachary, Rennie Whiting, Talia May, Chantel Johnson, Cakes Minx, Magnolia Iridium, Anonymous Weep, Dee's Nuts, Ash Wisdom, Nicodemus D, The Tribute, Galaxia, Spammy, Raylan, Deathhund, Melofia, Muffin, Aruna, Meow Meow Person, Cherry Red Bunny, Cat Cove, Kaya Abyss, Bit Bit, Sleepy Town, Hella, Nexorist and AJ Anime Girl. Thank you for your support. It's greatly appreciated.